Hello everyone and welcome to SVTWRC channel. Today we're going to talk about EV. In this specific case we're talking about a Chevrolet Spark 2016 electric vehicle. A hybrid vehicle uses both gasoline and an electric motor. Some use the gasoline as a generator for the electric motor. But this is pure electric. There is an electric battery cell, lithium ion, LG Chem placed under the rear seats. Charging of the lithium ion has different options and every single EV car should come with a standard portable charger that hooks up to your regular 120 volt outlet. That's your NEMA 15 wall outlet in USA. It is also very important to make sure that your house and your wiring and outlets can handle the 12 amp continuous charge or you could cause problems. The Spark comes with a J1772 connection and that is the standard connection for most GM vehicles. We're going to get into charging in depth in a separate video. Just to put the electric Voltec motor into perspective, there are no pistons, there's no air filter, there's no MAP sensor, no MAF sensor, no O2 sensors, no exhaust. They're not only a partial emissions vehicle, these are 100% zero emissions vehicles. As for fluid checks, there is no oil in the car. There is only an automatic transmission fluid, and that is inside the electric drive unit. And that never has to be changed out. There is no interval in the service manual that says when that transmission fluid needs to be drained. One great selling point of this car is that the battery has thermal management, meaning it uses coolant and or a heater element to cool or heat the battery when needed. This aids in the battery's longevity. The cooling system for the high voltage battery is fed through this reservoir with a special safety cap so you don't go putting something in there like syrup or applesauce or something like that. That is only Dexcool 50-50 water diluted mix with the Dexcool. That's the only fluid that goes in there. The other two coolant loops out of the three are the TPIM traction module and the accessory module. The other is what cools your cabin through a heater core style heating element. Now this coolant will not degrade like other coolants that are subject to the combustion process. So this coolant's going to stay fresh for 150,000 miles. That is when the recommended interval to change this coolant out. Checking the levels is extremely important. You want to keep a good eye on the hot and cold fill side of these reservoirs and each connection that connects to the reservoir underneath. There's also connections underneath the reservoirs that go to their specific lines. The coolant leaks should spray all over the place so it really shouldn't be a problem. Looking under the car and inspecting under there for coolant leaks is a good option too. Now if you're experiencing a coolant reservoir drop but no leak, that could mean that it's leaking into the battery pack, especially if it's coming from the high voltage. Don't want to flood the battery pack. It's a rare instance but it can happen. Something that was a surprise to me was the introduction of a 12 volt battery here in North America, it says. This 12 volt battery is the starting of the vehicle, which you'd think was the regular lithium ion battery pack. But in case of a crash, the lithium ion high voltage battery pack will shut down. The 12 volt battery then stores all the information for diagnosis. If one day your Spark EV doesn't power on, the manual states that you can jump this 12 volt battery like any other battery. It doesn't state that whether you should be charging the lithium ion or not. So that's a little scary to me. I would unplug my lithium ion charger first from the side of the car before jumping the 12 volt battery just as a safety precaution. You never know. The hydraulic brake system uses the DOT4 DOT fluid.
stay tuned everyone. We're gonna be going over some tips, trips, and traps of EV ownership and winter driving with an EV if you live in those climates. Uh, you will lose range because of the cold because the heater uses so much power. This video is long enough already. So we're gonna get into a few things on how to modify the looks and some of the performance of the car. Uh, we're gonna be looking into a couple performance upgrades for the motor, tire, and wheel combinations, as well as suspension combinations.